Hello everyone. I welcome you all to Simply Code. CSS, which also stands for Cascading Style Sheet, is an important aspect of web development. Any designing that takes place is through the CSS. Today, we'll discuss a CSS grid layout, which is an important aspect of CSS positioning. In this session, we'll learn what are the grid layouts and the components and how you can break your web page into several grid layouts. Before we begin, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so so that you never miss an update. What is a grid? A grid is a set of intersecting horizontal and vertical lines defining the rows and columns. And what is a grid layout? So, CSS grid layout is the most popular layout system available in CSS. It is a two-dimensional system, meaning it can handle both columns and rows. Unlike Flexbox, which is largely a one dimensional system. You work with grid layout by applying the CSS rules to both the parent element, which became the grid container, and the element's children, which became the grid items. The CSS grid layout excels at dividing a page into major regions or defining the relationship in terms of size, position, and layer between parts of a control built HTML primitives. You can see this is the basic layout of a grid system. Like tables, grid layout enables an author to align elements into columns and rows. However, many more regular layouts are either possible or easier with CSS grid than they were with tables. For example, a grid container's child element could position themselves so they actually overlap and layer similar to the CSS positioned elements. So here are the features of the CSS grid layout. They are fixed and have flexible track sizes. You can create a grid with fixed track sizes using pixels. For example, this sets the grid to the specified pixel which fits to the layout you desire. You can also create a grid using flexible sizes with percentages or with the new FR unit designed for this purpose. You can place the items into a precise location using the grid line numbers, names or by targeting an area of the grid. The grid also contains an algorithm to control the placement of items not given an explicit position on the grid. You can define an explicit grid with a grid layout. The grid layout specification is flexible enough to add additional rows and columns when needed. Features such as adding as many columns that will fit into a container are included. It also gives you control of overlapping content. More than one item can be placed into a grid cell or area and they can partially overlap each other. This layering may then be controlled with the z-index property. So, here are the basic terminologies you should know to work with the grid system better. The grid line is the dividing line that make up the structure of the grid. They can either be vertical or horizontal and reside on either side of rows and columns. A grid column is a space between two adjacent vertical grid lines. The size of a grid column is determined by the grid template column's property. On the other hand, a grid row is a space between two adjacent horizontal grid lines. Its size is determined by the grid template row's property. The grid cell is the single unit of a CSS grid. And in grid design, a gutter is basically the width of the space between columns. A gutter margin is the white space formed by the adjoining inside margins of two facing pages in a book, or a space between columns on a page. So, with this, let's now move on to the hands-on demo and see how the grid system works in actual world. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So, we are on the Sublime Text Editor, open with a project with some basic background styles and nothing inside the body. You can see, this is the basic background style we have pre-applied just to have a good look of the box model. We will start by creating a container and wrapping our grid items in it. So let's create a grid and give it a class name grid container. And inside of it, we'll put our different grid items. So we'll just create different grid items and give them a class grid item followed by a class number they belong to. 
so that we can easily distinguish between them. Just copy paste this five times. So we'll have the five elements on our page. Let's save the file and see how it looks on the page. So you can see we have the different grid items on the screen so that it is easy for us to visualize. We have not applied any styles to them other than the visual style. So we will go back to our code. Let's go back to the CSS styling sheet. So to create the grid, we will open our style sheet. We need to display grid on our grid container. So we will select our grid container and set the display to grid. If you save now, you will see nothing changes. This is because the grid itself doesn't define any rows and columns for us to work with. It just they give the alignment properly. Therefore, by default, it looks just exactly the same. To make the grid look actually grid, we want to need to do is define columns and rows for a grid. So to do this you will use a set grid template and set the column if you want to set the size of the column. Uh, we will set the size to 100 pixel and 150 pixel. Now, if you refresh, you have the 100 pixel column on the left and a 150 pixel column on the right and then the grid captures our next row. But what if we want our box to flexible size themselves according to the items inside of them? Here, we will use a fraction in it. Instead of a 150 pixel column, we want one fraction of our size and instead of a 100 pixel, we want the two fractions of our size. So, we will just replace with two fractions and this with one fraction. Now if you save the file and go back to the page, you will see that the items on our left here in our first column are twice as large as the item on the second column. And that is because of the FR unit we have defined. You can see the difference in the sizes. The item 1 is the twice of the size of the item 2. Another thing you can do is with columns is use repeat. Suppose you want 4 columns of a size 100 pixel wide. You can just write repeat command and inside of it how many times you want to repeat the size. So we will just delete this and use the repeat. We will set the number of times you want to repeat and the size of the columns. Now if you save the file you will see we have a 4 columns of 100 pixel wide. We can do the same things for row. Just set the grid template rows and define the size you want. Now you can see we have the symmetric size all around our container. If you don't know how large your grid is going to be, you can use the grid auto rows and this will determine the size of all the rows that is added after the template rows. Suppose we want all our rows to be 100 pixel. So we'll just delete the grid template rows and set the grid auto rows to 100 pixel.
Now you can see all the rows are now 100 pixel tall. Let's change our column back to 100 pixel and 150 pixels so that it will be easier for us further. We'll just delete this grid auto rows. Now we'll talk about the spacing of the rows and columns apart from each other. We can do this with the help of the grid gap property. Grid row gap will give some spaces between the rows. Similarly, the grid column will give you the spaces between the columns. Now you can see the gaps between the rows and columns. Now we want the same value for both the columns. You can use the grid grab property and mention the space. We'll just delete these two and instead of it we will use just the grid gap. And set the size to 20 pixel. Now you can see the evenly spaces between the rows and the columns. This is all you need to know about the sizing of the different columns and rows. Now let's talk about the positioning items within its grid cells. So for horizontal positioning, we could use the justify items and we can set that to center. So that centers each item within the cell. By default, it is set to stretch. You can also set it to start. Or end. Or space around. We will leave this to center. To vertically position the content, we could use the align items. The align items also accept the same values. We can set it to center. We can also set this one to start or end. Just we'll keep this to center as well. You can also align the entire grid within the container. So let's get rid of these to just demonstrate them in a proper manner. We could use a justify content and that will align the content horizontally within the container. We can also set this to start or to end. Just set this back to center. To align the content vertically, we could use the align content and the align content also accepts the same value. We can set it to center. Or start. Inspect the elements We 
you can see they are aligned centrally between the container. We'll just close this. Okay, so this is everything you need to know to get started with the grid layout. Grid works very similar to the Flexbox, but it allows you too much in terms of laying your elements because of its 2D nature. So this is it for this tutorial. Do leave your doubts and queries in the comment section and we will make sure to answer your questions. Thank you.